Hello and welcome everyone to uh, another installment in my uh, playtest play playthrough series of my own uh, Memoir 44 payback uh, scenario consisting of three breakthrough boards side by side using basically the D-Day expansion rules uh, with some special rules as well. Uh, if you want to have more information on that, please um, watch one of my previous videos uh, on this topic. Uh, this one actually deals with the first German turn of turn one. The Russians have already had their first turn, and the Germans played um, a probe in the center. Uh, and uh, what this means is this is their card for the next turn, because in this scenario, because we to reflect Hitler's meddling and everything, and, and micromanagement and everything that he was doing at the time. Um, the Germans actually play with the Russian Commissar rule. Uh, of course, it shouldn't be called that, and it is called something else, Hitler's meddling or Hitler's interference or something in the special rules section of the scenario. Um, but it, it is essentially uh, the Russian Commissar rules, so, um, so, the, so they have to pick their card for the next turn. In addition, they start with uh, just three cards, and they pick two extra uh, well, they, they pick one. They take one extra uh, each turn until they reach five, which they will keep for the rest of the scenario. But the uh, Hitler interference rule stays in play for the entire scenario. Uh, now, what they what did they do on on this particular board? Uh, well, two in the center and two on the move. Uh, this tank unit moved from here to here, and it's probably going to try and take position here soon to cover that flank a little bit. Uh, this tank unit will move from here to here, I think, also to have a, a good uh, field of fire um, at these units over here. Um, of course, the tank in woods is a very difficult thing to deal with, and as long as the Russians have not built a, a pontoon bridge here, they have to cross uh, through the uh, town hex. Uh, and this artillery unit actually attacked that unit, hoping to push it back into the town hex, which of course will create a bottleneck there and really slow down the uh, Russians until they actually do build a couple of pontoon bridges, which will um, make life a lot easier for the Russians and a lot more difficult for the Germans. Um, but the uh, artillery uh, did not score any hits whatsoever. Uh, they were all misses. Um, well, those two moved, and uh, I think I may have already removed one of these white ones. I think this one, yeah, this one actually did attack this tank, and uh, I just turned it upside down to denote that it actually scored a hit as well. Um, on the center board, they played an infantry assault. Actually, not so much for movement purposes, uh, but more uh, to actually get uh, some shots in at this point. Um, obviously, as for ground reinforcements, uh, only on the center board that they actually received some kind of result, they got to move uh, one unit, which moved from Minsk uh, onto the uh, bridge hex, uh, trying to deal with uh, probably this uh, pesky um, partisan unit, which will probably try another special rule to sabotage the railroad tracks, which will hamper German reinforcements, which actually have to enter via train. Um, so that will make it a lot more difficult for them. Now you may be thinking, why didn't this unit simply move back? I was thinking that myself, but uh, another special rule, which is easy to forget. Uh, and, and mind you, these are still, you know, I, I might do away with some of those special rules again, because in the end it may turn out that they're not needed or whatsoever. But for the time being, I think it really reflects nicely the actual battle. So, so for now, I'm playtesting it that way. And they are not allowed to voluntarily move backwards, and they even have to ignore all flags, unless a... Um, card specifically says that flags cannot be ignored, but... Uh, hence, moving backwards towards their own baseline at this moment is not allowed. So I'm trying to move up this unit to try and protect the railroad a little bit. Well, these units here at the front actually fired. Um, as you can see, uh, they uh, hit a tank there. Here another tank was hit. Uh, a couple of misses as well, obviously. Um, this one hit a tank and, and this one tried to fire at the infantry. Well, it did, but it missed. Um, again, as for scale, this is a huge area actually represented 
uh, in this scenario. Um, now, in case you're wondering, uh, wait a minute, of course, infantry units uh, or tank units whatsoever did not have this kind of range. Of course, you're right, but, you know, Memoir is kind of flexible as far as the scale goes, and I personally do not have any issues with that whatsoever. Um, and, 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 you know, to me, it just symbolizes that you need to assume some artillery support uh some logistical support some air support even you know so so it's just a denotion uh, a representation of, of of a big unit in this case um which you know do not only have uh regular hand fired weapons at their disposal you know so so um and and obviously one more remark which i have made before uh i do not have enough summer terrain uh, so to speak so so that's why i've used some uh, winter uh, river tiles and, and some winter railroad hexes uh, but obviously they're all meant to be and, and as far as woods hexes are concerned as well it's not like the desert woods or the jungles um, are actually jungles or desert woods they're normal woods but i didn't have enough of them so that's why i used those um well so so now that you're up to speed with what the Germans did, let's move on to the second turn of the game, the second Russian turn. Thank you for watching.